this video is to show you some screens in the point of sale and talk about the point of sale, the history of it, why it was made, how it was made. And I'm just going to flash some screens up and um, talk to you about the point of sale, why you should purchase it, and why other people have purchased it. So let's sign in and start away. Okay, now that we have signed into the point of sale, I would like you to know that this point of sale was developed at the start in 1997, the same time the O.J. Simpson trial was going on. That's how long ago it was. Now this point of sale has been designed specifically for Windows from the ground up. It's not an old DOS program that's been worked over. This was wrote from scratch for Windows for any size business. We have some very large businesses using our software and we have some mom and pop. The funny thing is we're charging the same thing right now for the point of sale as we were in 1997 during its release. We have not raised our price once. And the, the software company is actually called .dude.com. We got that name when all the .coms were real popular. And the name of the software is Rocket Point of Sale. Now, uh, a friend of mine works for SAP. That's a huge software company. They do something like $27 billion in sales a year. And they have a point of sale that they sell. Their point of sale starts out at $250,000, I think he said. And he worked in the point of sale department as a tech support person. So he knows their point of sale really well. His wife opened a little store. And he's a friend of mine for years. He calls me up and says, hey, can I get a copy of your point of sale from my wife's store? And I said, sure, I'll give it to you, but you have to do the support on it yourself. And he said, yeah, fine, no problem. I do support for SAP. He put the software in his wife's store. After about a month or two, he calls me up and says, hey, we have a problem. I said, what's your problem? He says, you know, I work for SAP in their um, point of sale department and I said yeah I know that he says well we charge two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to start out with our point of sale and your point of sale does more than ours does <laughs> and you're just a tiny fraction of the cost and I said holy heck I said maybe I'll raise my price to two hundred fifty thousand kiddingly we kept it at the same price as uh, for our base package for um, the point of sale since 1997. This is the inventory screen here. Another funny thing about our software, there is no limit. If you have a million inventory items, which we do have a couple stores running, uh, mainly distributors that have over a million items, and they use our software, searches are instantaneous in other words you can have a barcode reader hooked up to this scan a barcode and it instantly comes up no matter how many items you have uh, customers unlimited we do serial numbers full history tracking notes that'll print on the invoice your different levels and i'm going through these screens real quick just to give you an overview pricing we have three pricing levels internet price suggested list and these screens I go over in detail in other videos this is just to give you an idea what the point of sale is capable of now people often ask this what is this point of sale wrote in well it started out with a Microsoft product called Fox Pro and over the years we have switched out a lot of the routines and whatnot with C++ and a couple other language. We do have some assembler in here, like our search routines assembler, which is very, very fast. Um, 
And people, the next question they'll often say is, uh, well, how many people do you have using your point of sale? And at my last check, we have a little over 10,000 customers. Now, most of them are in, are in the United States. We do have some in Canada. And believe it or not, we got quite a few in Ireland. We had a dealer in Ireland that was selling it like hotcakes there for a while. It does have a, where you can throw a switch and everything changes to euros. And um, we have some in Switzerland, believe it or not, Australia, and different other countries. And um, we have customers here in the United States that I know one customer in particular because I talked to them a couple of times on what they wanted. Um, they have 64,000 customers and they do only billing. And um, they called me up and said, hey, when we do our billing, we have 64,000 billing statements we have to send out. We can't do that in a one printout thing without a lot of work. He says, can you break that billing down into like we can put in a date and say do it four times a month? And I said, sure. So we have that built into it. That's how our program grew. People calling up and asking for uh, different things and it grew and grew and we're still working on it we still add things we tweak things the other day I had a person call up and say uh, you know it'd be really nice if we just had a button that did this and I said oh okay I can do that and we put a certain button on his invoice screen for him and um, and like I said um, this program essentially has no limits on the number of customers, inventory items, vendors. It does have um, aging built into it. Um, it does uh, payments, accept payments, uh, multiple split tenders. Um, you can do loans, telemarketing, back orders, recurring charges, and cash checks, phone numbers. Put pictures of your customers in, pictures of your items. It does have a loyalty system where your customers can build up points and use their loyalty points on a purchase. It has the capability of texting your customers and you can set up a customer type. And um, say you have a customer that has children and you get a new item in that's made for kids. You can send out a mass text to all these people that have kids without sending it to everybody in your database and different things like that. Um, we have user-defined fields that you can use on all of our screens. Um, we have a what we call a multi-store. It allows several um, different stores to link together over the internet. You can go straight into invoicing right from the customer screen. You have buttons you set up on the customer screens, and these buttons will allow you to drill down into another screen. These buttons here will allow you to drill down to another screen, which will go down to another screen. As many screen levels if you want. You can have a hundred screen levels, which not would not be practical, but you could do it. You can say, okay, this button turn, returns to sales screen, or this button stays here, let you click multiple buttons. You can back up one screen. Um, you can set your discounts, delete an item. Security, we have all kinds of security built into the software. We have, um, put in your price. We have um, multiple levels of security. You can clone security if a new salesperson comes in. I cover that on a, on a, a video that we have online already. Um, all kinds of things you can do with this and you can slide your bar over here to see what your taxes are on it unit of measure serialize we handle serial numbers we do everything we have split tenders multiple split tenders you can um, say well, if you don't take gift cards you can remove this from this screen if you don't take checks, you can remove it from the screen. 
If you have a credit card, we have credit card processors we work with and we get you the best rates available. You can do a manual credit card process. Um, you can email an invoice to a customer. You can print it. You can do a, a GIF invoice if they're doing a gift. We have predefined amounts. So this one's $12. So say the guy's going to give us a 20. A lot of times people say, what's the up button for? That's something we come up with. Uh, say your charge is your customer owes four dollars and thirty-eight cents. Chances are they're going to hand you a five-dollar bill. If they hand you a five-dollar bill, then um, that's what the next up is. So you don't have to type in five point oh oh or click down here. Up it says go up to the next whole dollar. And we do gift certificates. We can um, CC ourselves on an email. We can do a fax invoice. We can do pick ticket packing. Cash drawers. Um, we do multiple screens. In other words, you have your screen, and there's a screen facing the customer that shows what he's buying on a line item. Plus, it has built in advertising for you. So say you um, sell a bicycle and you ring it in, it'll come up with a picture of your helmet. I mean, of course you have to set this up. It'll come up with a picture of your helmet and uh, a certain amount. And also you can have a window flash up here on the screen for the salesperson to say, hey, do you need a helmet with that bicycle? And they'll see it on the screen facing them. And they say, yeah, yeah, I'd like that. And so it helps you get sales. There's a lot of shortcut buttons to save time doing things. Um, you can do returns. You can put an invoice on hold. You can do a super search. Um, There's just so many features in this. I don't want to cover them all in this video or it'll take too long. We have vendors. You can do purchase orders. You can do all kinds of... Um, purchase orders you can set it up so say you sell I don't know thousand items and um, you buy from three main distributors you can set your system up so when it and say you do purchase orders on Friday on Friday you come in you pull up that vendor click a button it'll generate the purchase order automatically for you off of the settings you have put in. So in other words, you say, hey, we're supposed to have five on hand at all the time, and you sold two, and you tell the system to either order three or five or 10 or whatever you want it to do. It knows what to do, and it will do it. Also, when the purchase order comes in, you can click a button and say, okay, everything came, or you can go down through the list and say, well, this one didn't come, this one didn't, but the rest of them did. Reports, oh, Chase, we got so many reports. When we first started, we had maybe 50, 75 reports. Now, I don't know how many is in there, probably five, 600. And the way the reports come about was people would call us as using the system and say, wow, we need a report that does this. Wow, we need a report that does that. And we'd write it down, add it to the software, and uh, we have a way to import new reports, send it to the customer. They'd look at it and say, yeah, it's perfect. Or, oh, can you tweak this a little bit more here? And we have built up so many reports over the years. It's just um, pretty unbelievable, really. And the nice thing about all of our reports, or at least the ones that it, it should apply to, you're probably the main report everybody wants is the daily money for system. So you put in the date and time from, date and time to, do you want to screen, printer, file, or PDF, print it, and um, these reports remain available as long as you've been using the point of sale. Say uh, two years from now, a tax man comes and says, hey, two years ago, what did you do in sales? Bam, you pull up this, put in the dates, and, it, and the data's there. So, won't go into that a lot. Um, we actually print barcodes. If you have a barcode printer, or you can buy those labels like at um, some of the office supply stores. You can print barcodes on those too. You just select what kind of um, barcode you want to do. And um, 
We also have a marketing program where you can email customers. We have um, marketing text message to customers, different types. You can um, say pick a type of a customer that hasn't bought in three months. You can send them a text, hey, we got this on sale, or where you been, we miss you, or something like that. We have all kinds of marketing tools in this. Um, you can, let's see if I can find it here. You can write checks. We use this a lot. If somebody buys something from us, we say just take a picture of the check, send it to, you know, text it to us. We enter the check in here and um, print it, and then we either take it to the bank or take a picture of it and deposit it in our bank account. It's very so You don't need special check paper either, just regular old paper. And I have yet to have a bank say, hey, we can't accept a printed check. And this works great. I've We've been using it for years on our own sales and whatnot. You have discounters where you can discount things. Um, manager specials where it'll fire off at a certain date and time. So you say this date from this date to this date, you know, what it is, what department, put it on sale. You can either do it as a percentage or per dollar amount. Let's see what else we got in here. Auto pricing. Uh, we'll go over that later. It's pretty intense. Um, another neat thing we have in the inventory screen is say you have um, something you want to add something just about like it but maybe instead of 0 0.70 ounce maybe it's 12 ounces or whatever do a quick add these are the fields you need it copies all the data from that previous item and all you have to do is go in and change change um, like right here and so we'll go in and say this is 12 ounces save it now this item matches the other so if it's a whole new item it's got a new barcode and a new SKU makes it very quick to set up your uh, inventory your inventory sorts itself automatically by SKU description on hand committed price and these are just some of the features in it. Salespeople, track all of your salespeople. I got a full video online going over the security rights, all kinds of security rights. And one of the reports, uh, if I can find it here real quick, one of the reports we call behind the scenes actions. And uh, most of our reports, we put a description on it. But behind the scenes actions, we do not put a description on them, and, and you'll see why in a minute. So you put in a date and time. What this does is help to find a clerk that might be robbing from you or stealing, whatever you want to call it. Most times when you have a bad clerk, you have a bunch of good clerks. And one clerk will be doing the stealing, maybe two of them, you don't know. This report will help you. If he pops open and closes the cash drawer all a whole bunch of times without a sale, this records it. Delete an invoice line item, sell an items below cost, backed out of an open invoice. In other words, he had line items on the invoice and then he backed out of it. Deleted inventory items. Sometimes uh, we found that a, a clerk will add an item so it doesn't mess up your stock levels sell it and then delete the item and the store owner don't never knows it this tells you that happened edit a customer prepaid clerk has a buddy comes in he has a prepaid on his account say ten dollars the clerk goes in edits it makes it a two hundred dollars the guy buys all kinds of stuff uses the prepaid up clerk puts it back down to ten dollars you don't know where the money went. This helps find it. Selling, I, selling at negative amounts. This is a, a clerk will come in, or a person will come in. That's a friend of the clerk. Buy something for a hundred dollars, and then he buys 
something else for a hundred dollars and the clerk changes it to negative hundred or negative ninety nine. So now the guy walks out with two items worth two hundred dollars for a buck. First thing you do is run a summary and it shows all the clerks. Then you start looking down through your printout and then you can pick out a certain clerk to get detailed printout. This is a summary and then it'll do a detailed printout. Pretty cool feature. I don't know any other point of sale has that. All your reports have a um, security level. All of them start out at A. If you're a level Z, which is the owner and usually a top manager, you can change the report security level so only people with whatever level from A to Z can print it. Let's see. We have a lot of um, different uh, data file maintenance things. You can set up inventory templates and what that does is when you add an item it'll fill out and you can set up say um, where were we? Customer template. So say we're going to set up a customer template and we're in um, let's say Emmitsburg Maryland 21727 you have uh, four different pricing levels here for customers too you got your uh, what we call our walk-in customer maybe a, a customer you give a discount to maybe a distributor uh, electronic and um, different levels cash only uh, is taxable tax rate 0 0.07 tax type we don't have any of those set up and country customer type and so you save this so now remember we put in Emmonsburg so now if you come into your customer screen a new customer walks in you want to add him, just say add, and you'll see it's stuffed in Emmonsburg, Maryland, zip code, he's a type A, taxable. That saves a lot of typing when you do a customer. And these are just some of the features in the point of sale. We have um, probably our biggest customer ever was Avon. They bought 500 programs. Um, we have Fendi using it in four of their stores. They only have four stores that I know of now. And um, they wanted a software that would do a million dollar sale because the one they were using wouldn't go up that high because Fendi's a real high end store. And they're in Rodero Drive, New York, and um, some other places like that. Rod Rodero Drive in California. And the guy says, will you do a million dollar sale? I said, yeah, yeah, I showed him. He said, okay, put it in all of our stores. And on our website, we have references of, I don't know how many stores we have on there. Check our store, uh, our website, uh, rocketpos.com, and uh, you'll see uh, a lot of references on there, people using our software. And some of them have been using them for 20 years. As a matter of fact, we had some that were using our old DOS program we wrote in the early 90s when they found out we had a Windows version. They called us up and said, hey, I want to switch up to the Windows version. So um, we've been doing this a while. And I just wanted to give you a little quick overview. So thanks for uh, listening to me and going over it. And you can uh, email us with any questions. And um, we have many distributors and dealers around the country. If you email us where you're from, um, we will uh, point you in the right direction. Now our download is password protected and so you would have to contact us with some of your information so we can give you the password. Usually what we do is dial in and help you set it up and then once you get it set up you can use it just like the real point of sale and then when you finally unlock it all your data is still there. So, Alright, thanks a lot. Hope I didn't bore you.